In this section, we're going to discuss about a detailed case uh, regarding financial planning. And uh, we're going to see how we can use multiple inputs into a financial planning case and use Excel to kind of create a detailed uh, detailed view of what a person's financial plan would look like, right? Let's look at the details of the case. Given below are some data points about a person. Create a simple financial plan for the person and comment whether he is able to meet his financial goals. He would want to purchase the home with a 50-50 loan and personal money usage. He would like to check if a loan tenure of 15 years is feasible. Also, based on the life expectancy of 80 years, what is the return requirement? What asset allocation would you recommend? And what insurance cover should he take today? Right. So that's the broad premise of what is uh, what is the case. Uh, we look at the details of the case. It says the income is 12 lakhs uh, annual income. Age is 32. Retirement age is 60. Monthly expenses are 75,000. Expected salary increase is 10% 10 expected inflation is 8% current savings are 40 lakhs at this point of time wants to buy a house in 2020 that's worth 85 lakhs in today's terms kids higher education in 2025 that's 40 lakhs in today's terms and kids wedding in 2030 that's 15 lakhs in today's terms. Interest on home loans is 10% interest rate if required and then we have a detailed description of you know what kind of asset class returns could be expected using equities you know so equities debt and real estate what is basically the asset class return that is available right so let's first try and construct the broad outline of this plan and then we start incorporating things like what are going to be the assumptions and returns requirement that will come in right. So let's actually put in some headers here where we will uh, probably link in the expected uh, returns data. So expected returns from investments and we'll, we'll calculate this at a later point of time and probably plug in a different number. But to begin with, let's assume 10% and inflation rate is given as 8% and expected increase in salary is given as 10% as well right so we will select all this we will format all of this to percentages and put it here let's increase the size and let's left align all this right those are the inputs that we are looking at now let's try and build in what uh, what is going to happen here in terms of the age of the person the current year and net investments at this point of time salary then expenses annual that will give us savings based on this we can now try and find out what is going to be the uh, requirement for go for the goal so net investments end of year and then we have financial goals then we have loans and then we have EMI if any right so these would kind of come in and we'll also check at some point of time what is going to be the and this this rather than writing EMI is loan repayment is what we'll write because EMI works to a monthly number and because we are doing our calculations on an annual basis we will broadly put in an annual number here right so let's let's start putting in the numbers 32 2015 current net investments is 40 lakhs that's an input that in fact we link this input here so that's 40 lakhs salary is given as 12 lakhs then we have expenses which is monthly expenses are given to us so that's 75,000 into 12 savings would be salary minus expenses this is assumed at the end of the year net investments is the total net investments at the beginning of the year multiplied by 1 plus the expected returns right and we freeze this expected returns bit and along with this 
we have to add whatever savings are there right from this if there are any financial goals in the first year or any loan in the first year that has to get put in and loan repayment will only come if there is a loan right so we will at this point of time put it as zero eventually we'll make a completely dynamic model here right so we will link all this and we will format all this and put it here ideally in these kind of cases the best scenario is if we can actually convert it in terms of lakhs because otherwise the numbers look too big so what we should do probably is just take this number and divide it by 10 raised to 5 similarly divide this by 10 raised to 5 and divide this by 10 raised to 5 so that gives us the net investments at the end of the year this is remember everything is in lakhs right so I added a decimal point for that so that comes in and gives us the data point here to make it look more relevant what we can also do is select all this and put it in a currency of rupees right so we have a rupee number that is available with us and that's the net investments at the end of the year the next year is 32 plus 1 that's the age similarly 2015 plus 1 these we will center align the beginning of last year is going to be this year and we'll put all of this in terms of the currency salary grows at 1 plus 10 percent per annum and we freeze this bit so when we drag it down that's correct expenses grow at 1 plus 8 percent and we freeze this bit savings the formula is kind of fixed net investments at the end of the year the formula is kind of fixed no financial goals here right now what we need to do here is actually try and put the finance to make it dynamic and make it look uh, actually picking up data from somewhere what we can do is we can go to the financial and uh, so we will do that in a second we will we'll put a financial goals table here and we will put in this table in the form of this one required 2020 this one required in 2025 and this one required in 2030 and we will need to kind of take it up to how many number of years five years here ten years here and fifteen years here so we'll put in years left and inflated goal value financial goal value is what we are looking at correct so that's the number that uh, that we are trying to look at and that's the number we're trying to put in so 85 lakhs multiplied by 1 plus 8 percent which is the inflation number raised to the power 5 is what we are looking at and I can put all of this in a bracket and divide it by 10 raised to 5 so that we get the value in lakhs so we get the value in lakhs and I'll drag it down and we have 40 lakhs into 1 plus 8 percent raised to the power 10 divided by 10 raised to power 5 and then we have 47 lakhs available here as well so this is the year this is the inflated goal value and this here is the table that we are going to basically use as we go along our doing our work here so one way is we can manually put in the number the other way is we can put in a VLOOKUP and see if there is a number right so we can do a VLOOKUP and say that please pull us out the number and if VLOOKUP does not throw anything then it should kind of be zero right so let's put let's try and put a VLOOKUP here first we look up I'm looking for the year where am I looking for the year I'm looking for the year in this table and freeze the table I'm looking for column 2 in this so we're looking for column 2 and we're looking for an exact match and we press OK 
and we get an error because 2015 does not exist there if I put in as 2020 we get the financial goal value there correct so that value comes in so we go ahead and do our same data set where we say that if it is an error then what do we do so we put in an if error outside this the first value is we look up the second value is zero so if it is an error I want the value to be zero if it is something else I want the value to change right so let's try and drag all this down and see what happens so here we go we see that 2020 the value automatically comes in right now we've not yet incorporated this data here but ideally if there is a financial goal then the person may run out of money here so that formula has to incorporate g47 minus this amount plus any loan amount that is there right and then eventually if there is a loan repayment the savings will start incorporating that as well so we'll change that formula when we reach there so this is the calculation that comes out let's go down and we realize that here the value becomes zero negative right so obviously that will be a problem let's just try and extend it all the way up to 80 years because that's where we had expected the life expectancy to be it's gone a little bit further we need only till 80 years that's still here right so that's the value that we have based on the data sets that we have as of now and we'll obviously need to kind of plug in some data sets here and we see that all the all the goals also start coming out automatically now we can also see that the goals keep making things negative again and again so we will need to incorporate a loan somewhere and the moment we incorporate a loan somewhere we have to increase the loan repayment coming in there right so that's that's what will come in there we will look at that data as well but for all practical purposes this data has come in now we need to put in an if loop here which is that second one onwards the salary only comes if the age is less than 60 so if the bracket opens up if the and let's let's open the if logic logical test is if age is less than 61 or let's put it this way if age is greater than 60 then this value I want it in false control V and if it is less than 60 if it is greater than 60 then I want 0 else the calculation correct so that gives us this data and I drag it down drag it down drag it down till the time the person reaches 60 and we realize as soon as it reaches 61 it changes zero all the way up to down here so all this is zero and we realize that assuming a 10% return which is what we had assumed at our beginning uh, this person runs out of money towards the end so we need to incorporate those changes as we go along and see what happens where does the money come from and obviously in this particular case the expected return requirement would be higher we need to incorporate that into the picture as well let's first put in the component of loan coming in remember it was said that 50 50 loan and personal income usage is what is to be done so out of this 124 89 half of this has to be a loan so this by 2 is the loan correct so that loan comes in and the moment loan comes in automatically out of 103 only 62 goes out which leaves us with 41 here right so that brings in the loan amount and that's a standalone uh, number that will come in now let us assume that the loan tenure is loan tenure is 15 years loan interest is 10 percent that's what we know as of now loan interest is 10 percent and loan tenure is 15 years can I calculate the annual installments right 
So the same function annual installment. We're going to get the PMT number. Let's open the data point rate is 10% number of periods is 15 present value is negative of 62 and everything else is blank so we close it 8.21 is what comes in right and this is the repayment that we have to done that, that we have to do every year and as we keep doing it for 15 years we'll get our value so we have to put this number in for 15 years from here and that gives us the total value of the prepayment loan repayment that is done effectively so I can continue from 2020 and all the way up to 2000 and the next 15 years which is basically 2034 so I'll have to put this number in all the way up to 2034 correct now what will happen is from your savings annual savings you will have to pull out this number right so my savings become this minus this minus this number correct so that's the saving number that comes in and automatically the savings become negative for this particular period and so on and so forth for subsequent periods as well I can actually drag it down all the way up to below and we get the number there nothing else changes other than the fact that we have paid out this interest component in between and we end up getting some sort of a negative number here as well so at this point of time even after taking the loan there is a negative number that comes because of the higher education expense that comes here and that's what is causing a little bit of an issue issue here as well so we will need to incorporate that into the picture as well that probably another loan would be required at this stage another loan would be required at this stage and what happens contrary to this what we can also do is we can assume that the loan tenure is 20 years and see what happens there also the terms become negative for a period in between right so now there is an interplay of multiple things that will come in and we'll have to see what best works out in terms of the loan amount we'll stick to 15 percent now 15 years now but we know that there is a problem in 2026 immediately after the higher education pullout and that continues for a period of about eight years till the time the salary takes care of the entire thing so either we increase the expected return somehow to take care of this or we increase the tenure of the loan in such a fashion that it works out or we will have to recommend taking another loan at some stage right these are the three problems that we will encounter our next section will start dealing with these problems.